first up, I'm going to give the floor to Jennifer Lyon Bell. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Um, I started making films because I like porn. And I watched a lot of porn, uh, but I found myself wanting something very specific, something that just I personally wanted, and I kept waiting for somebody else to make it. Um, and what I was interested in seeing was films with what I ended up calling for myself emotional realism. Emotional realism means that I think it's really hot when you can understand why this particular pair of people in this particular situation is having sex and what emotions that they're having and how that kind of ties into the sex. So it's not about romance or anything like that, it's just about integrating the sex with the rest of your life. And I thought that that was hot and I kept waiting for someone to do it and I couldn't find it and eventually I thought, well, I'm just gonna have to make it for myself. And as a result of that, I wasn't trying to please anybody else. I was just making films um, that I liked. Uh, and then what I discovered was that other people were interested in them too. And I'll be honest, like in, in the film that we saw earlier, I talk a lot about being a woman and that I wanted to portray things from my point of view. But what I discovered is I just have a point of view and the films that I was making um, were appealing to lots of kinds of people of all different genders. Um, so that was a surprise to me and, and that's kind of how Blue Artichoke Films was born. So that's how I started. And so now this is my work, of course, but it's also my primary kind of creative outlet as a person. And it's also my primary activism outlet because I do truly believe that when we can put media images out there that show sexuality in a more creative way and a more forgiving way where we're more forgiving to each other and not making it seem like you're doing it wrong, I feel like there's good for everybody of all genders in that. And that's something that I like to do. Um, so today I want to show you um, some clips. I would say, okay, so I, I make different kinds of films. I make um, fiction films and I also make kind of documentary-ish films and then more recently getting into experimental films. So those things sound very different, but I think that they have a lot in common because I, these are things that I'm interested in. So I'm going to tell you about the things that I think tie together um, the films that I make in my work um, by showing you some examples. So the first film that I'd like to talk to you about is Silver Shoes. Um, and the reason I wanna talk to you about it is because something that's really important to me um, as a filmmaker, as a sex filmmaker, is process. So I actually believe that the process of making a film is almost as important, if not even really more important, than the end result. And uh, the way I like to say it is that this is kind of a trust-based process for me. So I start from the presupposition that the performers that I'm working with, I would like them to be as safe and as comfortable and have as much fun as is possible. And then everything is oriented around that. And I want to be able to earn their trust as a director and with my crew. So I only let people on the crew who are really cool and on the same page as me when it comes to that. And then we try to create this trust for the performers by doing things like um, negotiating what kinds of sex they might want to have together on camera and what they don't want to do on camera. Um, also, um, what kinds of safer sex barriers they would like to use or not use together. So we feel like we're all on the same page and that they can relax a little bit. Um, so hopefully that that trust is there, but then there's also like this other kind of trust that comes from my side. So once I feel like, okay, I've got performers that I believe in and I feel like this is the right project for them and this is the right project for them to work with each other, then I have a sense of trust that whatever happens between them, because, okay, let's be honest, I have an idea in my mind when I set out to make a film, like what I would like it to look like, or some images that I would like to see, or whatever, and the truth is, it, when you make any kind of film, it never comes out exactly like it is in your mind, but 
I think the important thing is honoring what actually happened. And I feel like if I have confidence that I've cast wonderful people, whatever happens on that day with the two of them, we're gonna make it beautiful because it is beautiful. And so far what's happened is that performers have made something that is even better than I thought it was gonna be. And I, I think that's really special. So let's look at Silver Shoes. This is just a trailer. Um, and then afterwards I'll tell you why I think that. between masculinity and femininity, bringing the two together. Like for me, it's incredibly sexy. So this was a great example of a film where I got back so much more than I gave. Um, the scene with the two women between Leandra Dahl and Annabelle Lee, I knew that I wanted it to be um, uh, about uh, uh, femme women having experimenting with masculinity, but they collaborated with me and the, the sex toy that we ended up using was actually the suggestion of Leandra. And, um, they gave so much back um, from what I had anticipated. Um, the second thing that ties my work together is chemistry. Because I think that, I mean, people can be sparky and they can have individual chemistry, but if you have two people and they don't have chemistry together, you're not making a movie. And I think that nothing can substitute for that. Um, and I think also when you have chemistry, you can uh, then get a sense of spontaneity and not knowing what happens next, which is so important. Um, so what I'd like to show you is a clip from my most recent film, Adorn. And um, Adorn had a very unusual structure. I decided I wanted to make an erotic game and it only has one rule. So they would start out naked and the game's rule would be you can only touch each other over or under clothing that you put on the other person. So the idea was, uh, yeah, they were gonna have to get creative. So finding two performers with tremendous chemistry to kind of carry this along and carry them through it was really important. Um, and that's what I did with Sadie and Parker, um, who you met uh, on, a on the film that we saw earlier. Um, Sadie and Parker had so much chemistry, I actually asked them to have a Skype conversation just to confirm that it was as good as we thought it was. And yes, it was very good. So um, let's look at this. Uh, 30 second clip from Adorn.
<laughs> I love that scene. Um, and the last thing that I think ties uh, my work together is a sense that sex isn't just a menu that you take your way through, although it can be a very nice menu to do things in the traditional order, but that sex is, is what you make it. Um, and I enjoyed making a Dorn in this erotic game so much that I couldn't resist making another one. Um, so I created a new game, and the game was that there would be playing cards, and on each playing card would be a body part, but not a traditionally sexy body part, things like elbow. Um, and the game is you just do stuff with elbow until you feel done with it, and then you pick another card, and the cards are hidden all around the set. So again, a very simple game, but my hope was that, because there's really no way to predict, like, well, what the cards will be, and and what you do with elbow, that uh, they would be creative with each other, it would tap them into each other, and that as the sex developed, that would be very creative too. So I'm once again happy to say that worked out fantastic. Um, that film um, is almost done, but what I have for you today is a trailer, and you guys are the first people in the world to see this trailer. Nobody's ever seen it before, including Bishop Black, who's in the front row here, who starred in the movie. Um, so, Please enjoy the trailer for Wild Card. <laughs> Everything says. Can you see me? Do you look at me? But I am invisible. Tell me what the usual thing. Maybe we can get it on. That is Wild Cards, starring Bishop Black and Kali Sudra. And if you want to put your name, there's some blue pieces of paper out at the desk outside. If you put your email address on there, we'll let you know when it comes out, and you can get a special um, discount for being here tonight. Um, so yeah, so these are the films that I make, and the the. Um, those, those are the films, and that's part of why we're here tonight, is to talk about the launch of the new Blue Artichoke Films erotic platform. So uh, this is a place that we've built where you can come and you can see all of the films that we have. Um, and it's safe, it's secure, you can see them in streaming or download, or in some cases even still DVD. And not just the flat films, but also virtual reality films. So uh, we actually, I actually with Bishop, I can't stop working with Bishop, he's fantastic, um, made a virtual reality film called Second Date. And Second Date um, is a 360 degree virtual reality film where you put goggles on and then you feel like you're actually in the space with the performers. And we took this, uh, this film to a number of really wonderful festivals. I felt very lucky to be there. Um, and for a lot of people, it was the first time they'd ever experienced virtual reality at all, because there's a lot of talk about it, but not necessarily a lot of people do it. And we really wanted to create that same experience on the erotic platform, where for the first time, if you want to, you can experience both alternative porn and virtual reality at the same time. So that was very exciting. Um, but in addition to 
showcasing films, the platform is so much more. And one thing I wanted to be able to do is share with people, how are these films made? What goes on behind the scenes? How do we work uh, as a crew together? And what is it like for the performers? And for some readers, maybe, do you want to be on the crew? Maybe you want to consider being in a film. That's something that the platform has. Um, it also has a blog because um, I'm really interested in talking about popular culture, about TV and movies, what do I see um, and what do I think I agree with or I don't agree with. I also go to all kinds of cool events like uh, a lot of people say, you go to a lot of porn film festivals, what do you wear to a porn film festival? So I wrote a little piece called the 10 things to pack for a porn film festival because um, why not? And then in addition to the blog, we have events. So. I myself do a lot of events. I like to show my films. I like to, uh, <laughs> I see some people's events are represented in this room. Um, I like to show films. I like to put together evenings where I show other erotic films. I give workshops like um, From Fantasy to Film, Design Your Own Erotic Movie, which I think some of you have taken, which is a creative personal development workshop. But also, um, I, uh, and I wanted to let people know about that, but also there's a lot of events going on that I can't get to, but I think are fantastic. So I'm cherry picking what I think are the best uh, things that you can go to and, um, and you can have a look and maybe there you can meet other people who share, share values uh, like we do around sex positivity. And that's, that's all I wanted to say tonight. I'm so happy to have these wonderful international guests who can share with you um, their ideas about erotic culture. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. And I hope that we'll see you at some of our events where we can get together and, uh, and chat about what we've seen and learn about sexuality together. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Jen.